Why is it so high? Is it because I was dreaming that I was sitting in a gondola in Italy eating pizza? It doesn't make any sense. Welcome back to the Kisana Health channel, the best health information channel for people with pre-diabetes or type 2 diabetes. Today we're talking about fasting blood sugar levels that are too high. So we're going to look at the reasons that this might happen and what to do about it. Oh yeah, and in case you were wondering, no, dreaming of eating pizza does not increase your blood sugar. Just saying. First off, let's clarify a few things. Fasting blood sugar refers to your blood sugar level in the morning, after a prolonged period of fasting, since you know you were sleeping for at least seven or eight hours. If you have prediabetes or type two diabetes, you were probably advised to check your blood sugar when you wake up, so before you eat or drink anything. The reason it's important to check that fasting blood sugar level is because it gives clues about how well your body manages blood sugar. In other words, fasting blood sugar that is high is often an indicator of insulin resistance, which is why sometimes it's used to diagnose prediabetes or type 2 diabetes. For reference, a fasting blood sugar level that is lower than 100 is considered normal. A fasting blood sugar level that is between 100 to 125 is considered prediabetes. And if fasting blood sugar is 126 or higher on two separate tests, then it's considered diabetes. Of course, a diagnosis is often confirmed with other more precise tests like the A1C. So please consult your doctor first to get adequate testing before diagnosing yourself or anyone else. Okay, so what could cause high levels of fasting blood sugar? Number one, what you ate the previous night. Either a high carb dinner or a bedtime snack that's also high in carbs, or you know, when you have heavy meals like deep fried foods or fast foods, those kinds of meals take a long time to digest, meaning that they will raise your blood sugar for a prolonged period of time up until morning. And that could obviously be worse if you have already slow digestion. If that is your case, you can of course look at changing what you eat or how much you eat at dinner time. A simple advice is to increase the amount of protein and limit the amount of carbs that you eat. The other thing you could do is you can also go for a walk uh, 15 minutes after dinner. Number two, stress on the body. So if you're sick or if you're injured, the body interprets that as stress. And in those situations, it's normal to have higher levels of blood sugar. I'll link a video up here on how to manage sick days with diabetes, so you can check that out in case that is your situation. Now, sometimes you can be doing everything right, you know, following healthy eating habits, exercising regularly, taking all your medication or insulin as prescribed, and still your fasting blood sugar is all of a sudden high every morning. There are two reasons that are more biological that can lead to high fasting blood sugar. The first one is called the Dawn phenomenon or Dawn effect. And the second one is called the Samoji effect. I know it's a weird name, but this effect was named after this guy, Michael Samoji. He's a Hungarian American researcher who first described this effect in the 1930s. There's your history lesson of the day. So the Samoji effect is also called rebound hyperglycemia. Anyway, let's explain what these two effects are. The Dawn effect. It's basically an increase in your blood sugar levels in the early morning hours that is known to happen to about half of all diabetic people. It's caused by our body's natural release of certain hormones like cortisol, growth hormones, and that's done to prep us for the day ahead. So these hormones follow a circadian rhythm, slash like eternal clock, to promote the release of sugar in our blood. And this is meant to give us energy to begin our day, right? Now, this is something that happens to pretty much everyone, not just people with diabetes. For most people, the body produces insulin, and that's how it controls the rise in blood sugar to keep it in a safe range. However, if you have diabetes, your body either doesn't produce enough insulin or it doesn't respond well to insulin because you're insulin resistant, which means that you won't be able to keep your blood sugar levels in a healthy range and they will rise the next morning. Usually this effect happens sometimes between 5 a.m. and 8 a.m. and sometimes it lasts until mid-morning or noon, depending on the person. We'll get to how to deal with the Dawn effect in a minute. Let's first get a quick look at what the Samoji effect is. The Samoji effect. Earlier on, I said that it was also called rebound hyperglycemia. So the theory is the Samoji effect happens when blood sugar levels fall drastically overnight, which triggers a rebound effect that causes them to rise high in the morning. The way I see it, it's basically your body's way of saving you from going into a coma or, you know, dying. 
because in order to save you from dangerously low blood sugar during your sleep, your body starts to release plenty of sugar into your blood, which leads to very high fasting blood sugar when you wake up. The Samoji effect usually happens to people who use insulin. So they either take a dose that is too high in the evening or they skip their dinner or they do intense exercise in the evening without eating a snack after. All of these things can lead to hypoglycemia during the night and then a rebound hyperglycemia in the morning. Now that you know the possible reasons for high fasting blood sugar, the next thing you need to do is find out which is happening in your case. So how do you sort this out? Is your fasting blood sugar high because of the Dawn effect or because of the Samoji effect? Honestly, it could be a little tricky to isolate just one reason that causes high fasting blood sugar because like I said earlier, there could be more than one factor at play. So you kind of have to play detective to find out the cause. You have to be curious, measure your blood sugar often, take notes, keep track of your medication, your insulin doses, what you eat, when you exercise, how much you exercise. And then you take all this information and you share it with your doctor or your healthcare team so they can play detective with you as well. One way to play detective on your own is to find out what happens to your blood sugar at night. This is the best way to find out if it's the Dawn effect or the Samoji effect. Obviously, this is really easy if you have a CGM, a continuous glucose monitor. A CGM is like a little sensor that's placed under the skin that connects to a monitor and it gives you continuous readings of your blood sugar levels. So Dexcom or Freestyle Libre are the most popular examples that I could give you at the moment. They're super useful, obviously, especially for people who use insulin. If you're like most people and you don't use a CGM, that's fine. You can still find out what your blood sugar levels do at night by checking more often. You just need to be that kind of detective, you know, the kind that wants to go the extra mile and is willing to set up an alarm at 2 or 3 a.m. for several nights. So that means that you would have to check your blood sugar results at bedtime, then again at 2 or 3 a.m., and then again at your normal wake time in the morning. And that's when you can look at all your blood sugar results that you collected and then you can analyze them. So if you find that your blood sugar is low at 2 or 3 a.m., then you can suspect it's the Samoji effect. If you find that your blood sugar in the middle of the night is normal or high, then you can suspect it's the Dawn effect. Once you've figured out what the cause is, let's look at treatment options. How do you treat the Dawn effect? There are three lifestyle changes that are recommended to help decrease this Dawn phenomenon. The first is exercise. Exercise in the evening, maybe go for a walk, do some yoga, nothing too intense, but get your body moving. Then for your last meal of the day, you can increase your protein to carb ratio. So play around with that. See how much you can increase your protein and how much you need to reduce your carbs to have a healthy blood sugar the next morning. And finally, this is probably the most important, always have breakfast. I know it can sound a little counterintuitive because your blood sugar is already high and you don't want to get it worse. But what happens is when you eat, your body gets sugar from food and it will start to produce more insulin and that helps your body to understand that it's time to stop the release of these other hormones that made your blood sugar rise in the first place. Moving on, how to treat this emoji effect. The first advice is the same as previously mentioned. You can eat more protein than carbs for the last meal of the day or eat a snack in the evening at the same time as your insulin. This helps to stop your blood sugar from dipping in the middle of the night and then rebounding back up in the morning. Number two, go to bed with a slightly higher level of blood sugar than usual. So one thing, for example, is to avoid strenuous exercise before bed. The other ways of treating the Samoji effect include adjusting the timing of your insulin. So instead of taking your insulin in the evening, you could take it in the morning. The other thing is you could lower the dose of your insulin before bed, or you could change the type of insulin from an intermediate acting insulin to a long acting insulin. These last few things that I mentioned, changing your doses or your insulin timing, should only be done with the help of your healthcare provider, so please don't make any changes without consulting first. Remember to check for several nights and take notes. You will want to show all your results to your healthcare team so they can come up with the best action plan for you to help you lower those high fasting blood sugar levels. The thing is, if you don't receive the appropriate treatment for high fasting blood sugar, that can increase your cardiovascular risk, it can worsen your insulin resistance, and it can lead to faster progression of diabetes complications. So all things we'd love to adjust. Finally, I just want to say that regardless of the cause of your high blood sugar in the morning, you should always, always take into account lifestyle factors like your sleep quality, your stress management, your eating, and your exercise habits. Those are the things that you can modify on your own and that can have a huge positive impact on your diabetes. 
Let me know in the comments below if this was helpful, how you deal with your morning blood sugar, and you can also let me know if you ever dream of eating pizza, or is that just me? Don't forget to give me a thumbs up on this video and subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this one. Take care everyone, I will see you in the next video.